Today on Reservations Required, Chef Akhtar Nawab hits the big time with his New York City restaurant, El Ataria. Find out why his unusual twist on American cuisine has made him the toast of the town. In downtown Manhattan, Chef Akhtar Nawab is giving the restaurant scene some serious flavor with his soulful menu at El Ataria. A veteran of such acclaimed restaurants as Kraft and Gramercy Tavern, he's now venturing out with business partner Noel Cruz to create a place they can call their own. When you were coming up with the concept of El Ataria, what were the things that were the most important to you? You said, if I'm gonna open a restaurant, these are the things that are essential. I wanted to be downtown. I wanted to uh, have a place where we could play rock and roll at the same time as have very serious food. And uh, I wanted to work with someone who was gonna, I was gonna be able to get along with, and I knew it, so uh, a lot of that came true. So what is the concept at El Ataria? Um, at El Ataria, what we try to do is show American cuisine as, you know, kind of interpreted through, through our upbringings. It's a spice-driven cuisine, but it reflects very loosely against uh, some of the traditional techniques I've learned in places I've worked and experiences I've had. So first is American restaurant and second is slightly influenced by India. India because your, your family is from India? My family is from India. In some ways, I feel like what you're reflecting is a little bit of how the vernacular of American food has evolved. American food is about a lot of different people and a lot of different influences. I think that's actually exactly correct, is that, you know, recognizing all the different influences of this, of this country and just choosing one to explore it, but really keeping in context that it's an American upbringing with an Indian sensibility. Business partner Noel Cruz, who mans the front of the house, brings his own culinary experience to the table. Originally planning a career in the kitchen, Cruz sailed through prestigious cooking schools such as the CIA and the French Culinary Institute before landing at the legendary craft in New York City. It was here that Cruz began to hone his business skills, working alongside famed owner Tom Colicchio and such rising star chefs as David Chang and Marco Canora. Now, where you met Akhtar is kind of a breeding ground for a new generation of New York City chefs, like people who I'm really excited when I go to their restaurants because you guys were all in the same, basically the same class at, yeah. at Kraft and Kraft Absolutely. Bar. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the tutelage of like Tom Colicchio, watching him and his success. Uh, I look to these guys, you know, even though I'm not in the kitchen anymore, they, they become not just great chefs, but great business people. And that, or, or become successful knowing the, the, the whole entire operation. That, and that's, to me, allowed me to get to where I am at this point. Now, we're standing at the bar, and the bar is a very important part of Elitaria, both because of cocktails and because of your wine program. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, this is a kind of a unique situation where attached to this great restaurant with the amazing food is a bar program that I am hoping that equals it. We treat the bar like the chefs treat the kitchen. Every drink is hand crafted and they're measured properly, there's recipes, I mean, for consistency and, and there's a little bit of flair to it. And also what you have are really fun cocktails. It's not just your, your basics or, or the classics, they're just some, uh, some unusual twists. There are, because of the concept here and the influence of spices and the flavors used in the food, we wanted to bridge that with, with the cocktail program and the beverage program, including the wine. What did this used to be, this space that you're at on 8th Street? The space was, uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, a nightclub slash speakeasy jazz uh, bar called The Eighth Wonder, where um, a young Jimi Hendrix uh, used to perform. It's kind of funny how the, it happened, but the way the space laid out, the stage, which is now the kitchen, was located at the same, same area. It's funny because the stage every night here is the kitchen. Is the open kitchen something that is nerve-wracking for the chef? At times, some diners can make it that way. Um, but really what it's about is uh, just seeing what we're doing. It's very, it's very honest, it's very craftsman-like oriented. They can see how fresh the food is and they can be part of what, what, what the restaurant's all about. 
Though the kitchen takes center stage, designer Jason Volnick played with other fun details to give Elitaria its unique and intimate feel. Noel, what are some of your favorite parts about the space at Elitaria? Well, besides the open kitchen, which well, that's pretty good. You know, the stage. Um, you know, this area right here has become this roving insulation of other people's found objects is one of the really nice. It's like a curiosity cabinet. Yeah, I love that actually, and I love the fact that the velvet curtains kind of set it off. A space that would really be lost because it's basically the space to go downstairs and upstairs becomes suddenly charming. And then what anchors the room kind of in the center is this temperature controlled wide room, which was always been kind of a dream of mine to have. Probably the biggest thing in here is the reclaimed barnwood ceiling, which really makes a statement because of the low ceiling. Was it a Vermont barn? Was it a Maine barn? It was a, it's a random amalgamation of New York State, upstate barns. Upstate barns. Upstate barns. And to further embrace the low ceiling, they added some whimsical touches to the design scheme, like a cut-off painting and a fake staircase, just a few of Elitaria's many quirky elements. This is something that I really love. It's a great way to kind of set off this room, and it kind of has this feeling of, again, being in someone's country house, and uh, it is really simple and unusual, and again, is this kind of looking glass moment where you're like, why is there an odd half Half it's door just in the another, middle of the restaurant. Yeah, it's just another playful element which you may or may not catch on your first second visit. So That's why you have to come three, four times, right? Or more. Or more. What are some ingredients that people are gonna see on the Elitarium menu that they're not maybe used to? There's black cumin, mm -hmm. um, which is very cool stuff. Uh, there's fenugreek leaves again, which is different and very cool. But usually those things are combined with other spices, so here we try to simplify it and, and try to focus just on fenugreek or just on the cumin and explore those flavors in conjunction with kind of whatever we're doing. Are people responding to these flavors? People who, who you know, are maybe native New Yorkers who've never been anywhere near India? I think the people who respond best are the people who are looking for something um, a little different. People who come here really looking for Indian food, I think sometimes are like, this is an Indian food. And I, they're right, it's not. It's not any food. It's, it's, much, it's much more American. What do you think would be your dish that you think is a signature dish at Elitaria? I think that the crab rosal is something that's a good reflection of um, what I do and some of the flavors we're trying to incorporate to this place. Crab meat rosala. I see something that looks like gnocchi. They're called Parisian-style gnocchis. They're potato-less gnocchis. They're made with a pas de choux dough. A pas de choux is... A, Flour, eggs, butter, that's salt. What, that's what you make puff pastry with. It's the same thing as an eclair, yeah. Except we've made it savory. So what are we going to do with it? So the first step is to caramelize these. We're going to add the gnocchis to the pan. You get that and sizzle. Here. That's what you, you want. You want that a little bit. These are caramelizing okay. nicely. And then when we get a little, a little more color, we're going to add a small piece of butter. And the butter... And you see how they start to brown a little yeah. right now. And the butter does what? It starts to brown a little, and it helps uh, everything to caramelize evenly all the way around. And that's very important. They've actually kind of gotten to the cons consistency of tater tots. That's you, good. Is that what you're, you're going for? I do like that, and I like tater tots. So in the meantime, we can put the rest of the dish together. Oh, no, so what is a risala in so, the classic uh, sense? A risala is a traditional dish from a, a town where my mother's from, although you can find it in other places in India, too. You can make risala to fish, chicken, whatever. Here we've chosen crab to really say something maybe a little different about something that's very traditional. But when you say risala, is it something like, is it stew or is it a... Uh... It's traditionally a stewed, you know, a lot of Indian stuff is uh, traditionally stewed in one pot for a very long time. Slow. Um, gently for a long time, it finished with yogurt. So here what we do is we take the, what would normally be the sauce and separate that and we make the sauce separately and finish that with yogurt and that's more like an onion puree with turmeric and, and, and yogurt. This puree is mixed with crab meat that has been cooked in butter and is then combined with the gnocchi. A little grated turmeric root and some fried herbs finish off the dish. Now, is the ideal situation here to get a bite of everything? The idea is, yeah, when you get into it, when you get into eating it, that you know, you're gonna want to spoon from the bottom and, and kind of right, get everything here together. here we go. Mmm. The tang from the onion and... Um, the and yogurt. Yeah, and yogurt, it's very, very kind of... Uh, almost acidic, and then really softened by the butter uh, and also the, the sweetness of the crab. And I love these little, like these little... They're very addictive. Crunchy, yummies. This is better than chips. I could really... 
shit in a movie theater? In news? Maybe, yeah, maybe a new business for me then. Instead of popcorn? Instead of popcorn.